and welcome everybody to the Daily Space Weather. Today we'll be talking about more sunspots forming. Actually, two groups spontaneously formed since yesterday's video. We'll talking about we'll be talking about unexplained aerial phenomenon data jump, a data dump, and coronal holes. Not a data jump, a data dump. By the way, I'm your host Dan, aka Smash O Mash. Let's take a look at the sun. So we see these two sunspot groups forming. Yesterday's reported umbrae have since evaporated. So yesterday we were talking about these umbrae over here. And those have since gone away and been replaced by two sets. So two separate groups. There's one and there's the other one. And those have grown in the past few hours. That's about all. I'll zoom in on that. I'll just let that play through so you can see the forming of those sunspot groups. We'll see if those get a name. Here are the magnetic fields with the southern hemisphere. And the likelihood of coronal mass ejections has actually dropped a little bit. We'll show you why by showing you the view from Lagrange Point 5 at Stereo A. You can see this plume out here has de-intensified a little bit. Some of the ejecta has apparently already ejected. But in any case, there is less plasma in between Earth and Sun at this point. And again, that's the view from Lagrange Point 5. The radio flux has come up to 74. There's a one-year chart of the 10.7 centimeter radio flux, the measurement of the radio output of the outer solar corona. And there's the chart through the last cycle. And you can see how proportional that is to sunspot number. If you're a new viewer, the radio flux, it was discovered in 1947 by some Canadian radio users and it's been monitored ever since we've got some helio viewer movies here's 304 angstroms gotta have it as it's very good at showing filaments I'll let that play through a second time And here's 94 angstroms. We'll show you 171 and 193 angstroms close-ups at the end of the video. Next, we'll move into the Smash Lights segment. And we regularly do Smash Lights segments as part of the Daily Space Weather videos. Thanks for leaving comments. Kathy Garden. Good morning to you also, and to be stoic, who says missing data. What data might that be? So yeah, check out the Smash Lights. It's a playlist, youtube.com slash smash mash slash playlists. We've got various playlists there, including the Smash Hole of the Week. We'll be coming out with segment 00002, Fascists. And we are streaming live currently to Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash smashamash. Thanks again for our viewers over there leaving comments. And if you haven't pressed like and subscribe and the notification bell and the share button on YouTube, please take a moment to do so now as the video cannot commence until you do so. And Bestoic says there's missing data in the Lasco and the stereo. I'll take your word on it. So have you pressed like and subscribe on YouTube? Have you pressed share? Have you shared on your social media our videos? We need your help to get the channel out there and continue growing at the incredibly snail pace that we've been growing. Check out our own websites also. As we saw the writing on the wall years ago and obtained smashamash.com smashamash.com and smashamash.org 
You can find our social media there, our Patreon, Twitter, Gab, Minds, Locals, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, and so on. There's even a Facebook group. You can also link to our forum and our stores. And let's do a cosmology segment. Before we do that, let's thank our patrons. Thanks, patrons, the true source of funding for the content. And if you'd like to become a patron, help increase the probability that these videos will continue to be free, publicly visible, and available at places like YouTube, patreon.com slash smashamash. And today we're going to roll a die. It's a 1,031-sided quantum die. And today's random number is 472. Before I go to that, check out the outputs from Cygnus X3. There are the X-ray emissions from Deneb, the brightest intrinsic object visible in the Milky Way galaxy. And let's go to four, number 472 here at the Neil Gorel's Swift Bat X-ray Observatory. Number 472 is a BL Lasserte object which is a type of active galactic nucleus with a very continuous optical range. Not just optical, but it's got a BL Lasserte objects would be visible throughout a wide portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, perhaps all the way from radio all the way up to X-rays, and you can see it's a consistent X-ray source, at least going back to about 2006, quite consistent there. And you can see similarly consistent over the past 30 days. And let's see if we can image this object. 7C1424 plus 2401, the BL Lasserte galaxy. And it looks like an elliptical galaxy. And let's pull up Aladdin light and see if we can see some more interesting views here. We'll bring up the Chandra X-ray. And it's not showing up on Chandra or Fermi. How about XMM Newton in the X-ray band? Nope. And here's the two-mass infrared light band of that full-spectrum galaxy 7C 1424 plus 2401. Today's featured cosmology segment object, and there are the X-ray emissions from it. If you want to follow X-ray emissions from your favorite objects, such as, oh, I don't know, Sagittarius A star, for example. Go to the Neil Gorel Swift Bat X-ray Observatory. And there's Sagittarius A star, the core of the Milky Way galaxy, which has come out of a quiescent state here to, to kick off the, the year 2021. Year of accountability. All right, and we've got some more cosmology stories to cover here, so let's continue on. We've doubled the number of lensed objects. Here's a great example of a lensed object. And by the way, consumer tip, don't go into GIMP and take this part of this lensed object and go move it over here and turn it around and compare it to this lensed object, this lensed image. Don't just don't don't clip this and then move it over here and turn it around and go, look, there's a lensed image over there, too, which means there must be a Birkeland current in between you and the object. That's not science. That's just stupid. And many of you know which channel I'm talking about. That channel shall remain unnamed and silly and inane. But there is an article here on fizz.org doubling the number of known lensed objects. So some interesting lensed objects to find there. And that's on phys.org's astronomy and space section. Also, have you heard about the data dump about unidentified aerial phenomenon? Well, you can find it on the Black Vault. There's a link to it at space.com. CIA allegedly releases entire collection of UFO related documents. And here's one from just a couple weeks after I was born. April 26, 1976. I'll read you a snippet of the highly redacted information. 
Dr. Redacted has advised that he would evaluate any additional information we receive as well as disseminate significant developments through appropriate channels should it be warranted. We wish to stress again that there does not now appear to be any special program on UFOs within the intelligence community, and this should be related to Redacted. Redacted. In view of Dr. Redacted willingness to review additional information received on the UFO phenomenon, we will keep subject case open to your office for the present. Please keep us advised of any new developments. Redacted, redacted, redacted. So, yeah, you can find it all on the Black Vault. And uh, we'll be looking into that more in depth. I guess that counts as cosmology. Here's a document from 1957. We neglected to mention in CHGO 9228 that our contact with Leon Davidson was person to person. He was in Chicago for a scientific meeting. He explained that he is doing an article for a space magazine. Anyway, thanks for tuning into our space magazine. That was today's cosmology segment. And again, you can find links to that data dump at space.com. And let's move on to more data. And here's the real-time solar wind. We're looking at six hours of data here as we just saw the solar wind density and speed drop off. Density went all the way from 8 protons per cubic centimeter down to around 2. And the solar wind speed incredibly low here. Barely 300 kilometers per second. And we see some values below 300 kilometers a second there. That is the six-hour graph, by the way. For some reason, the one-day chart was not showing a bunch of data. There you can see that. And I'll bring up the three-day chart here, show you that precipitous drop-down of the solar wind. Maybe not. How about one week? Some odd errors happening here. Anyway, there you can see the one-week chart that ramping down of the solar wind speed to levels below 300 kilometers per second. Noah disagrees, by the way. I thought there was a coronal hole wind stream on the way, but I don't see any forecast for it. We'll be keeping an eye on that. And when I say eye on, <laughs> well, the pun is intentional. If you're wondering what I'm drinking, it's coffee with cayenne and cocoa. Anyway, there's the KP index of measurement of global geomagnetism currently at zero for the past six hours. And here you can see the incredibly weak magnetohydrodynamic pressure in the geospace magnetosphere movie. We're showing four hours of data, and you'll see this pressure drop to even lower levels here in the second half of the movie, as in the past two hours, we've seen the solar wind speed diminish. And there you can see that drop in pressure. We'll also show you the density today, since there was also a density drop. And there's four hours of density. So very weak solar wind at this point, although a small uptick in activity at the sun. As again, we've seen two sunspot groups form since yesterday. And there you can see that low-density solar wind. Next, we'll look at ground magnetic perturbations. And we don't see very many, as there is very little induction caused by incoming protons. We show the data regardless on the daily. And we don't see any proton strikes. There's a three-day chart of the proton flux. And there you can see some minor X-ray flares, nothing even resembling a B-class. And those did, at least one of those did come out of the umbral region that we looked at yesterday. I have a feeling one of those sunspots, one of those sunspot groups will remain on the disk long enough to be named. 
it's got to be there over 12 hours. And next we'll show you the GOES magnetometer before we get into the GONG2 data. So there's a three-day chart of the GOES magnetometer. And the scale has expanded a little bit as we saw some pretty high readings around noontime for the satellite yesterday. For you new viewers, the N's and M's, those are noon and midnight time for the GOES-16 satellite. And the GOES-16 makes its measurements around 300 kilometers altitude at the F ionosphere layer. Here is the GONG-2 data, the top view ecliptic plane field plot. Keep in mind the data is 1 hour and 43 minutes old. The Earth is solidly in the South Pole current sheet shown in red. By tomorrow, we may snap across into a North Pole current sheet, shown in green. Here's the latest image. And this over here indeed looks like a sunspot. And we'll keep you in suspense about that. Here's the line of sight coronal hole plot. And you can see that large south-oriented coronal hole there attached to the south solar polar region as well as one in the north, attached to the north solar polar region. And another coronal hole rotating in just on the southeastern limb. And here's a different view of the same stuff. This includes also the solar magnetogram. And today we've got the coronal magnetic field plot as well. The magnetic field plot of the sun's corona, the atmosphere of the sun which is a magnetically turbulent place, to say the least. I like to use in-the-sky.org and draw in the ecliptic and face my star, my star chart to the south. You can face yours in whatever direction you like. I face mine to the south because I'm currently facing the south. And here's a chart of the solar system. This is where planets are located and so on. And there's where things will be in a week on January 21st, 22nd rather. Please leave us a comment if you've invested in Trump tortilla chips and if you're excited about seeing them, seeing Trump tortilla chips distributed to the Galactic Federation. Or if you would prefer to see Frito-Lay take over the solar system. Let's talk electrons. Electrons can charge up satellites. And we don't see any of that happening right now. There is the charging hazard situation. It's non-existent. Here's the one-year chart of the electron flux. And we really see a gradual dipping down here uh, since around September when we saw quite high levels. Now we're seeing quite low levels and NOAA forecasting even lower levels of electron flux. I still say we're going to see a coronal hole wind stream in about two days. And that could explain this forecasted dip. I would agree with that forecasted dip, a slightly lower electron flux coming. NOAA and I agree on that one. Here's a three-day chart as measured by the GOES-16. Nothing exciting going on there. Here's me vanishing. And there's just a diagram of the atmosphere. It shows you electromagnetic penetration as well as layers like the troposphere where your weather occurs, the F ionosphere layer shown there on the right with that red F, the temperature of the thermosphere and so on, which by the way is almost warmed all the way up to a level of cool. You can find that data at spaceweather.com. Next, looking at the total electron content forecast, this is basically a visualization of the inner Van Allen belt. And this shows you where GPS errors will be likely to occur. And we see some significant ones here, even occurring at nighttime around Antarctica, as well as some GPS errors there over North America. And we see more anomalous electron zones during times of low electron flux than high electron flux. They get less orderly as a result. And here is another graph, another chart here, just a visualization. And you can see GPS satellites there as well as the, the low Earth orbit of the International Space Station. 
We see some continued power outages here. <clears throat> Nearly 50,000 out of power in Washington and another 22,000 approximately out in Idaho. If you're wondering what that is, that's poweroutage.us. And next we're going to look at the ionosphere layer. And we've been seeing anomalous charge-ups in the southern hemisphere over the past several days. And we're sort of seeing the same thing there. Let me uh, bring up the latest image. You can see that that charge up there south of Africa, which has been going on for a couple days here. <clears throat> Here's the latest image from 915. And once again, we see this, this triple charge up. A little bit on the anomalous side there. That's 9.15 Universal Time. And here's a, here's a visualization of the, uh, the earthquakes under Kilauea. You can see the majority of those are down in the uh, southwestern portion, the southwestern flank of Kilauea. And I just brought that up as we saw a magnitude 4 quake under Kilauea. Let's see what other volcanoes are erupting. Sakurajima indeed is on the list. It's producing a 7,000-foot ash plume. Suwinosejima, 6,000-foot ash plume there as it explodes. So Kilauea saw a volcano tectonic earthquake with a magnitude 4 underneath the south part of the island. It was felt as far away as Oahu. Popocatapetl exploding. 20,000-foot ash plume there. Oh, and back to Kilauea. Kilauea is erupting. There's a lava lake, there's a, a floating lava island and a water lake, there's, a, there's lava and seismic swarming. Fuego's exploding also down in Guatemala. It's producing a 16,000-foot ash plume. Sangay exploding, 19,000-foot ash plume. Revenador exploding, 15,000-foot ash plume. Sabancaya exploding, 25,000-foot ash plume. And Sofrier on St. Vincent in the West Indies, now on the list as an effusive eruption continues. So the lava, the lava dome has been extruding. And it continues to get higher and bigger. Thermal imagery has been thermal imagery has not been helped by a bunch of clouds. And they're trying to get thermal imagery now. And the plume contains sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide. Which, by the way, can kill you, according to Volcano Discovery. The largest quake of the past 24 was this 6 point Two located south of Mamuju, which is at Indonesia. Let's see what else has been shaken over the past 24. Well, there's a deep quake near Japan. A deep quake near Fiji. And that's 6.2 occurred at 1828 Universal Time yesterday on the 14th. Here's a very shallow quake at Hawaii. It's at 700 meters above sea level. And that one is located under the eastern flank of Mauna Loa, if you were wondering. And I'll just let it scroll up the list here citing anything out of the ordinary. Really, it's still it's still an earthquake lull, folks. I mean, here's a 4.7 at Indonesia at about 140 kilometers. Here's a 4.4 at Fiji at 556 kilometers depth. But the magnitude 7, 8, and 9 earthquake drought continues. Here's a 4.8 magnitude deep quake at Indonesia 
It's at over 220 kilometers depth. And let's continue on to talk jet streams. There are the jet streams of the Western world. And we've got tripled up jet streams there over the Atlantic Ocean. As well as some extreme meridional jet stream flow. It looks like some warm air will be hitting Michigan today. And also we've got backward jet stream here over uh, West Central Africa. Jet stream blowing east to west is not the normal way of things. Don't believe me? Ask a pilot. Here's a jet stream blowing backwards over the Western Pacific and the Indian Ocean once again. Really over the entire African continent. So half the world has a backward equatorial jet stream right now, folks. And I got nothing more to say on that. And let me just check the life of the stream and the comments. Bestoic says it's Evos basically like a bracelet with Taurus, and then it's a series of those in Taurus shape type of exotic vacuum object shape observed in many experiments and inferred by marks left on lab plates with reference to the lensing that we talked about earlier. And let's get to some more meteorological stuff. So we see a little string of lightning there out in the Atlantic. Here's a real-time lightning map at lightningmaps.org. I break it out when I hear thunder. No terrestrial lightning strike in the U.S. right now, or we would call out your location. We see a pretty strong low-pressure system here over northeastern Iowa. You can see that counterclockwise rotation on the Doppler radar map. And we'll show you a snow forecast as you may be interested in how much snow is expected to fall. And here's the GFS forecast through Monday. So this is about three days from now, around the time we'll be making the video on Monday morning. I'll be doing show prep a little after 6 o'clock Universal Time. And there's the progression of that as the the Great Lakes region gets pretty pretty significantly blanketed here. The entire state of Ohio expected to be under snow. Heaviest snow in southern Minnesota and central Iowa, as well as some pretty heavy snow there in some local spots there in West Virginia. Next, we're looking at pressure cells here on windy.com. There's where they are now. And there's where the GFS forecast expects them to be at 12 noon tomorrow. And here's what's going on in the cloud layer. And we've also got the water vapor map. And you can see that rotating pretty powerful low pressure system there. Again, over uh, eastern Iowa. And we'll zoom in on that area. I might as well show the cloud layer as well. So there's the cloud layer. And here's water vapor. Should give you some idea of what will be happening next if your Doppler radar is unclear. And basically, it's going to stagnate. As there's not a lot of dry, massive air to push that system out. Which is why it's hanging around. And again, there's the cloud layer. And there's the water vapor. 
And we've got bonus features. We're going to show some abnormal bonus features, as well as the regular bonus features, which are going to consist of a high res image of those new sunspots. Let me just get that to the right size here. And here you can see those two groups. There's one group. There's the other group. The second one I just put the arrow on looks like it's shrunk since we did show prep. And here is the colorized magnetogram. Give that a minute to load. And there's the magnetic environment. Pretty small sunspots. I would recommend that none of our viewers be COVID idiots. Here at the Smash News Network, we try to avoid COVID idiocy at all costs. By the way, congratulations on mankind by curing racism last year by posting black squares. That was great. Congratulations to Dr. Anthony Fauci for admitting fraud to the New York Times and still not being held accountable. Will you hold this fraud accountable for moving the goalposts an entire 10% based on herd immunity? How many Americans need to be vaccine, vaccinated in order to reach herd immunity? Is he going to be accountable? We would also recommend that you Mansa make America not suck again. Perhaps pick up some of our merch. You can link to it at the Smash O store. You can link to all that stuff at smashomash.com. Congratulations on surviving a global pandemic so far. Where do you fall on the covid spectrum? Are you down here where you say viruses are fake and there's no risk to anybody ever? Are you here in the middle where most people are, where you say we need a balanced approach? Or are you at the completely crazy end where it says every human is a deadly viral vector who needs masks and lockdowns today and possibly forever even after vaccination? And are you seeking accountability for big tech since Google, Facebook, Apple, and Twitter can't break the Internet, but the Internet can break Google, Facebook, Apple, and Twitter? Also Amazon. Yeah! You may have known all about that. And again, we've got a few more images of the local yellow dwarf here to close things out. Here at the Smash News Network, we're now showing you the 193 angstroms view, which shows significant coronal holes, both associated with the south and north poles. A couple of active regions right in the earth-facing zone there. Small sunspots, and I have a feeling one of them will get named. And here's a close-up of the north coronal hole area. Great view of that. And last but not least, we'll show you the south. Extremely defined coronal hole region. Great view of the southern coronal hole. And that's about it. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Remember, stare at the sun. Don't drink. And if you do, don't drive. Seriously, don't drive. Visit our sites. Support the channel. Press like and subscribe. Share with your local science noobs, science pros. Share with your friends. Share with your foes. We'll see you next time. I've been your host, Dan, a.k.a. Smash-O-Mash. And may that solar wind be at your back.